Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a game that I know a lot of you are going to be excited about. This game is The Last of Us running on RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator. Now, this game, it's kind of weird to get in game because one, you need to build up your disc based cache. Two, you need an in-game save to actually be able to load into game that doesn't draw you straight into a cutscene. And three, you need to enable your debugging menus. And well, four, I guess, you're also going to need to use a lot of weird settings and settings that generally in most games would make your game perform, perform a lot worse. So I'm going to show you all of those settings and if you actually have the game I'm also going to provide you with all of the files you're going to need to load into game and get this running for yourself. So let's quickly jump across to my desktop and I'm going to show you how to do all this stuff. Okay so here we are on my desktop and all of the things you are going to need are right here. So this is the build I am currently using, let's just load in and I'll show you its exact number. So here is its exact build number, this is what I'm using. You can also see that the version of The Last of Us that I am using is listed right here. You are going to need to rename the game save that I am providing you right here to match this exact same serial number of your game. So you need to match the number BCES01584. You need to make sure that you rename the starting number at the start of this game save file to match whatever the serial number of your game is. Okay, so the games are stored in dev hdd0 home this folder right here and then the save data folder so all you need to do once you've renamed your file is drag and drop it right here and we are basically good to go in the save game department okay so let's now come back to our main directory and before we do anything we need to come to this gui configs file right here you want to open this current settings.ini and i know this is a wall of text but what you want to do is you want to scroll down this page and you want to find this meta show debug tab equals true. You want to make sure it's equals true, not equals false. If it's equals false, the debug tab will not show up and we will not be able to turn on one of the essential settings. So once you're done with that, click file and save. And then you want to actually come into RPC S3 itself, right click on your game and come to configure. So as you can see, the debug tab has indeed appeared. So let's just go over some settings that I'm using. I'm using the interpreter fast. For SPU decoder, I'm also using interpreter fast. Um, you basically, well, I have found that you need to leave this at auto or it just crashes your game. You also need to enable thread scheduler, lower SPU thread priority and enable SPU loop detection. I am also only loading this library right here. When we come across to our GPU tab, I am rendering using OpenGL at 720p and you are just going to leave all of these settings as you see them right here. Uh, in order to get the game to also boot and show graphics, you need to enable right color buffers, use GPU texture scaling, and strict rendering mode also needs to be enabled as well as disabling of the vertex cache. Now, once you have these settings enabled, you want to come over to the debug tab, and you need to enable this force CPU blit or BLIT emulation. As you can see down here, it says it significantly degrades performance, but it's more accurate in some cases. This setting overrides GPU texture scaling options. So once you have this setting applied and you have all of the settings in GPU and CPU applied, let's save our settings and let's actually, I'm just gonna make sure my controller is, yep, yeah, my controller is correctly detected and let's actually load and get into game. Now the first time you do this, if you've never played the game before, you're going to have to build up a disk based cache like you just saw me load there. So it's going to be not really trial and error, but you just have to keep loading the game over and over again. And eventually you'll build up more and more shaders and it'll get more and more stable as you as you load through this process. Okay, so as you can see, our performance is gone down to about three or four FPS. That generally means that we're about to start loading through the preview screens or the splash screens, I suppose you'd call them. And we should be coming up to the first splash screen right about now. I can actually hear, and you should be able to hear if you're booting in, you should be able to hear an ambient kind of background countryside noise is the best way I could explain it. And um, that's a fairly good signification that you are actually properly loading in and that everything is working as it should do. You can see that we are getting our splash screens. There's the Naughty Dog logo. And 
let's just continue and see how far this is gonna load now this this to be honest this could crash at any any moment this could completely stop working because even though for me it generally does work and load in game every single time i do it um it's fairly rng based at this moment in time so as you saw we saw the last of us and let's just there you go i can now hear the in-game menu music even though it is incredibly buggy and there we go the first steps towards the last of us actually being playable and correctly going in game so as you can see we are loaded into the menu i'm just gonna wait for it should say press start button or something very similar to that yep there we go it says press start button so i'm just gonna mash my start button and try to get past this screen there we go that sound signifies that we are past that screen and if you correctly imported the save as shown previously in the video you should have this option to continue through epilogue so as you can also see we can actually move around in the menus so they're not completely unresponsive but the fact that it is at 2 and 3 fps makes it quite hard to navigate so let's just come to continue epilogue and let's hit the x button and actually load in so once we load through this menu, we should see the spores on the spore loading screen. The Last of Us loading screen, I guess you would say. And we can also see some graphical artifacting. It's, um, it's fairly bad in the loading screens, but it's generally not terrible in game. To be honest, it's kind of RNG based because it might be bad in game at one point. And the next time you load in, there might not be any graphical artifacts. So we're just going to have to see exactly what it looks like once we actually load in game. So if this takes extra long to load, it can at some stages. I'm going to actually speed up this footage and actually get us to a point where we are in game. Okay, so there we hit loading and there we go. Confirmed. The Last of Us going in game with a game save and with all of the settings I have previously shown you. Now I am speeding this footage up 300% because as you can see in the top left hand corner we are running at 1.5 and 1.4 FPS and it doesn't exactly make for the greatest watching experience to watch someone play a game at 1 FPS. So this is sped up 300% just so you can actually see what the graphics are like. Uh, how far we can actually get into game once we actually start playing you can see that the graphics are quite dark uh, That usually happens just before we actually compile a shader So as soon as we compile our next shader it should actually fix a lot of the graphics So let's just continue and see there we go as you can see we compile a shader and Compile another one and the graphics have to an extent fixed themselves now, even though you do require all of the things that I have shown you in this video, be it using interpreters and using game saves and using debug features in order to enable graphical rendering and in order to get you into game and all this, it's still awesome that this is going in game and it actually is rendering graphics as well as it is. Even though we are getting fairly horrendous artifacting, um, I should probably put a seizure warning before before I, uh, I get in game at this stage. Um, it actually it looks fairly good like the majority of the graphics are rendered if anyone if anyone actually remembers when red dead redemption first went in game uh practically nothing was rendered none of the characters were rendered and if i actually remember correctly there was a build of rpcs3 in which all that was rendered on player characters was their hats so that was actually that was actually quite a funny build because all it was was in a in the very first town, Armadillo, all that was rendered on any of the NPCs or the player character was their hats. So, um, so yeah, you can imagine that that was quite funny to watch and to see, uh, see NPCs and your player character running around and all that was rendered was their hat. So yeah, this is what the game looks like. So I know it's not exactly ideal and it's in no way playable. And the game hasn't even been put into the in-game section of the compatibility guide due to the fact that you actually do need a game save. So that is completely legitimate considering if you don't have a game save, which the majority of people will not have, you are not going to be able to load in-game. Okay, so we're coming up to an area that generally every time I've gotten to it, 
the game has crashed or become unresponsive. And just as I say it, it has crashed indeed, and we are locked to 1.36 FPS, and the game and emulator is completely unresponsive. So there we go anyway guys, our first look at The Last of Us, I was about to say Red Dead Redemption, uh, The Last of Us running uh, in-game for the first time on RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator. So as always guys, let me know down in the comments if there are any games you want me to test. As always, remember to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.